Dear loving students, welcome to the online class. In the pre midterm examination, most of you have done your exam very well. I congratulate all those students who have performed well in the exam. So, only a few students who did not study well, so they could not score more marks. So next time, all the students should study well and try to score maximum marks. Please follow the timetable that is given to you. Follow a strict timetable and there should be a regular study read textbook take down notes point wise and write down the answers properly your answer should be neat and uh, legible then only you can score marks understand the question and write the answers so, in the previous class of nationalism in Europe, we studied about uh, what is a nation state, uh, what is liberalism, what did liberalism stand for in the economical, social, political sphere. We studied about uh, aristocracy. We studied about uh, <coughs> What steps were taken by French revolutionaries to create a sense of collective identity among the French people? Now let us move on to the next question. What conditions were viewed as obstacles to economic change by the new commercial class? What conditions were viewed as obstacles? Obstacles means a hindrance. Uh, for the new uh, commercial business class people. Point number one, there were no freedom of markets. There were no uniform weights and measures. There were many custom barriers. There were many custom barriers. A person traveling from uh, uh, one place to another, you know, uh, Nuremberg, Luxembourg, he had to uh, pay custom barriers at uh, 11 places. Each place uh, he had to pay 5% uh, custom tax. So there were many custom barriers. Each custom barrier they had to pay uh, customs duty. Tax they had to pay. So there were no freedom of markets. They could not sell their products in the market. There were There were no freedom of markets, there were no uniform uh, weights and measures, there were many custom barriers and uh, each state had uh, its own currencies. So for example Germany had 39 states, suppose each state had its own currencies, so it was very difficult to do business. A person traveling from Nuremberg to Hamburg had to pass through 11 custom barriers paying 5% at each barrier. 11 into 5 means 55% tax he has to pay. So a businessman traveling from Nuremberg to Hamburg had to pass through 11 custom barriers. Like we have Walayar custom barrier, Mutanga barrier where we have to pay taxes. And next one, the measurement of cloth LA varied from region to region. On the next point, you will, it will be more clear. An LA of textile material bought in Freilberg has 53.5 cm. Mainz, it will be 53, 55.1 cm. In Frankfurt, it will be 53.54.7 cm. And in Nuremberg, it will be 65.6 cm. So it was very difficult to uh, do business. 
So this is a very important CBC question. What conditions were viewed as obstacles by uh, by the new commercial class? So uh, there were no uniform weights and measures. Each had uh, its own currency. So all this affected very badly in doing business. There were no fair markets. There were custom barriers. All that. Let us come to the next question. What is conservatism? We studied in the previous what is liberalism. Opposite of liberalism is conservatism. What were its features? Conservatism is a political philosophy that stressed the importance of tradition, established institutions and customs and preferred gradual development to quick change. So the conservatives wanted that uh, a tradition, established institutions, church, monarchy and the customs should be preserved and preferred gradual development to quick change. They were against any sudden change. Change is okay but only uh, change should take place slowly. What were its features? Point number one, conservative regimes were autocratic. What do regimes means rule? Regime means rule. Conservative rules were autocratic. The monarchs were autocratic. Uh, nobody can question them. They did not consult anyone. They were autocratic. Authoritarian type. They did not tolerate criticism and uh, dissent. They did not tolerate criticism and uh, the word is dissent, D I W S E N T, dissent. They tried to curb activities that question the legitimacy of autocratic governments. So they did not tolerate criticism. Uh, nobody can criticize the, the autocratic rulers, the monarchs. They tried to curb activities that question the legitimacy of autocratic governments. They tried to curb, curb means control, activities that questioned the legitimacy of autocratic governments. They don't want anyone to question the, the legal authority of autocratic governments. Legitimacy means legal authority. They imposed censorship laws to control what was said in newspapers, books, plays and songs and reflected the ideas of liberty and freedom. So they imposed censorship laws to control anything that was said in newspapers or books or plays and songs where ideas of liberty and freedom were reflected. So I hope you have understood what is conservatism. Conservatism is a philosophy that stressed the importance of traditions, customs and established institutions and uh, preferred gradual change. So we saw what were its features. Let us move on to the next question. What were the provisions of the Treaty of Vienna of 1815? You know, 1815, in the famous Battle of Waterloo, Napoleon was defeated. So, in the famous battle of Waterloo, Napoleon was defeated. After the defeat of Napoleon, a treaty was signed in Vienna in 1815. Let us find out what were the provisions of this treaty of Vienna of 1815. Point number one. The Bourbon dynasty was restored to power. The Bourbon dynasty, which was uh, removed from power earlier, was restored to power. They were given the power back. The Bourbon dynasty was given the power. Point number two, France lost the territories it had annexed under Napoleon. France lost all the territories it had added uh, during the role of Napoleon. Napoleon had uh, added more territories. 
So France lost all those territories. Third point. A series of states were created on the boundaries of France to prevent the French expansion. France should not expand to Europe. So a series of states were created on the boundaries of France uh, to prevent uh, to prevent the French army from expanding the territory to European countries. Fourth point, Prussia was given new territories on its west and Austria was given control of Italy. Prussia, the most important state of Germany, was given new territories on, the, on its western side and Austria was given control of Italy. The German Confederation of 39 states were left untouched. Germany had 39 states. Those states were left untouched. And the next point, Russia was given part of Poland and Prussia was given a portion of Saxony. So this were the provisions of this were the provisions of the Treaty of Vienna of 1815. Let us go through once again the points. The Bourbon dynasty was. Uh, restored to power means they were given power back. France lost the territories it had added during uh, under Napoleon. A series of states were created on the boundaries of France to prevent the French expansion. Prussia was given new territories on its west and Austria was given control of Italy. The German Confederation of 39 states were left untouched and Russia was given part of Poland and Prussia a portion of a part of Saxony. Now let us move on to the, the next question. What steps were taken by the uh, revolutionaries to create nation states? The revolutionaries set up secret societies in Europe to train revolutionaries and to spread their ideas. So, the first point, uh, uh, the revolutionaries. The European revolutionaries set up a secret societies in Europe to train revolutionaries and to not only to train revolutionaries and to spread their ideas of liberty, their ideas of nation states. They set up secret societies like Young Italy and Young Europe to fight for freedom and liberty. So in order to fight for freedom and liberty, the French, the European revolutionaries set up a secret societies called Young Italy and Young Europe. They saw the creation of nation states necessary for freedom struggle. They found that uh, creation of nation state is very necessary for the freedom struggle. Now let us come to the next question, give an account of uh, uh, Giuseppe Massini. He was an Italian revolutionary born in Genova in 1807. He became a member of the secret society of uh, Carbonari. So he was an Italian revolutionary. He founded two underground societies called uh, Young Italy in Marseilles and uh, Young Europe in Bern. So he founded, he established, founded means established two underground societies called Young Italy in Marseilles and Young Europe in Bern. He believed that God had intended nations to be natural units of mankind. He believed that God, it was the desire of God that uh, uh, there should be nation states. So he wanted Italy to be forced into a single republic. He want Italy to be forced, united into a single republic. We should know that Italy was divided into seven states. Germany was divided into 39 states. But Italy was divided into seven states. So Giuseppe Massini wanted that Italy should be united into a single republic. So Italy should become a nation state. So that is why he formed this two underground societies called Young Italy and Young Europe in Bern to spread his ideas. Now let us come to the next question, give an account of Greek War of Independence. 
The Greek War of Independence began in 1921 uh, due to the growth of revolutionary nationalism in Europe. So due to the growth of revolutionary nationalism in Europe, uh, the Greek War of Independence began. The freedom struggle of uh, Greece began in 1921. The nationalists in Greece got support from uh, Greece living in exile. Those Greeks who were living in exile were uh, banished from their country, who were living in uh, some other countries. They supported the nationalists in Greece. Many West Europeans supported them as they considered Greece as a cradle of civilization. Many West Europeans, they supported the Greeks fighting for independence because they considered uh, Greece as a cradle of civilization. Many civilizations developed in Greece. We know that uh, many things developed originated in Greece, for example. Democracy first originated in Greece, Athens. So the father of democracy is known as Pericles. So democracy first originated in, uh, in Greece. We know that uh, Olympics first originated in, uh, in Greece. Olympics. So uh, the Olympic Games started first in Greece. Greece had uh, uh, many great philosophers like uh, Plato, Aristotle, Socrates, etc. So the West Europeans considered Greece as a cradle of civilization. The fourth point, the English poet Lord Byron organized funds and later went to fight in the war. The English poet Lord Byron, he not only organized the funds, he went to fight in the war and uh, due to which he died, he, he died in, uh, in Greece. By the Treaty of Constantinople in 1832, Greece became independent. So finally, by the Treaty of Constantinople, which was signed in 1832, Greece became an independent country. So that is all about the uh, uh, Greek War of Independence. Let us come to the next question. What is Romanticism? Romanticism is a cultural movement which tried to develop a particular form of nationalist sentiments by criticizing the glorification of reason and science and by focusing on emotions, intuition and mystical feelings, especially by romantic artists and poets. So once again, what is Romanticism? It is a cultural movement which tried to develop a form of nationalist sentiments by criticizing the glorification of reason and science. They criticize somebody glorifying or praising science and reason, but they focused on emotions, intuitions and mystical feelings. So that is called uh, uh, Romanticism. Now let us come to the next question. Culture and language played an important role in promoting nationalism. Explain with examples. How culture and language played an important role in promoting nationalism. Point number one. German philosopher John Gottfried Herder claimed that true German culture can be discovered through folk songs, folk poetry and folk dances. So German philosopher John Gottfried Herder he said that the true German culture can be discovered among the common people of uh, Germany through folk songs, folk poetry and folk dances. Because these folk songs, folk poetry and folk dances depict the real culture of the people. Point number two. After the occupation of Poland by Russia, the national feelings were kept alive through music and language. After Poland was occupied by Russia, the national feelings of Poland were kept alive through music and language. 
Karel Kurpinski celebrated the national struggle through his operas and music, turning folk dances like Polonaise and Mazurka, underline Polonaise and Mazurka into national symbols. So he celebrated the national struggle through his operas and music, through dance and music. He turned the folk dances like Polonaise and Mazurka into national symbols. After Russian occupation, the Polish language was forced out of schools and Russian language was imposed. So when Russia occupied Poland, they forced uh, Polish language out of uh, schools in Poland and uh, Russian language was imposed on the people of Poland in schools. So many members of the clergy used Polish language as a weapon of national resistance in church gatherings and for giving religious instructions. So in order to uh, develop a feeling of nationalism, uh, many members of the clergy, the priest, they used uh, Polish language as a weapon of national resistance in church gatherings and for giving uh, uh, religious instructions. They refused to preach in uh, uh, Russian language. A large number of priests and bishops were put in jail or sent to Siberia for refusing to preach in, in, Russian, lang in Russian language. So from this we can understand how culture and language play an important role in bringing uh, unity uh, among the people of uh, Poland. Let us come to the last question of this session. Why the period from uh, 1830 to 1848 was considered as a period of hunger, hardships and uh, revolt in Europe? So it was a period of uh, revolt because in most countries there were more job seekers than employment. People suffered from unemployment. Population from rural areas migrated to cities to live in the overcrowded slums. So many people migrated from the rural areas, villages to the cities to live in the overcrowded slums. Small producers faced stiff competition from imports of cheap machine-made goods. The small producers in towns faced stiff competition from uh, imported cheap machine made goods. Peasants struggled under the burden of uh, feudal dues and obligations. The peasants uh, had to pay uh, the feudal dues, uh, taxes uh, and obligations. They had to do uh, uh, free labor, you know, in manor houses. Uh. So the peasants struggled under the burden of uh, feudal dues and obligations. There was price rise and shortage of food in Europe. Uh. That is another problem, serious problem. There was price rise, uh, food prices increased and there was a shortage of uh, food in Europe. Uh, in France, uh, even bread was not available. So that forced people to come out on the roads. So there was price rise and shortage of food in Europe. That made the people to revolt. As a result, people came out on the roads and erected barricades. That forced uh, even uh, uh, the Louis Philippe to run away from uh, France. So, I hope you understood uh, why the period from uh, 1830 to 1848 is known as a period of uh, hunger, revolt, and hardships. People faced many hardships. They had to. They were under the burden of taxes. There was price rise, there was shortage of food, they suffered from unemployment, cities were overcrowded, all these problems. And uh, the nobles and the clergymen, they lived a life of luxury. They were not concerned about these people, third estate. As a result, they came out on the streets to react and uh, uh, came out on the roads and erected barricades. So all this created uh, uh, tensions in uh, in Europe at that time. So, I want all the students to write down these questions neatly in your uh, notebook. Learn those questions and uh, study well for your uh, uh, for your exams. So, please read the textbook. Uh, uh, two or three times so that you may understand the lesson well uh, 
you should study uh, three to four hours daily. Textbook reading is a must. Then only you will understand the uh, lesson much more better. 